Hi there, I'm Ben and welcome to part 8 of my full Platinum walkthrough for Bloodborne. We're going to Castle Canehurst or Canehurst Castle or Forsaken Castle Canehurst, Canehurst Castle, whatever. <laughs> Castle Canehurst, that's what I'm calling it because that's what Annalise calls it. So yes, she's the queen of the place or the queen of the vile bloods and that's where we're going. So, start by going to Witch's Abode. This is where we fought uh, the Hem Witch's Hemwick. Uh, so you will recognize this place. Here we are. Uh, yeah, so we're going to go back. We use the castle, the Canehurst summons that we got from Yosefka's clinic earlier on when we were in Forbidden Woods. We're going to use that to get to the castle itself. It's uh, actually a side area, this place. Uh, my, I would say my favorite area of the game. It does have some of the worst <laughs> enemies in the game, uh, but they're just outside. Once you're inside, it's uh, it's fine. So yeah, you'll re recognise all these. Uh, they're the three sort of old women that chase you down the hill. This is the executioner that was guarding the um, the chest. They're all going to be very easy to kill now. Um, we're basically heading to that big stone pillar plinth I mentioned when we were here originally. We're basically heading back through the village, Hemwick, uh, down here, and then that big uh, that. That thing on the left hand side there. I think it's a gravestone. I don't know what it is. Whatever it is. That's what we're using. Yeah, cheeky headbutt again from that guy. That was close. So yeah, you need the the Canehurst summons. Otherwise, doing what I'm about to do in a moment won't happen. You should have them. If you're following along with this, then you, you will have them. Because we did go and get them earlier. But if you're wondering why it's not happening... This, what I'm talking about, this cutscene will kick in and a carriage will come towards you. It's because you need the Canehurst summons and they're in Yosefka's clinic, which you need to get back uh, through the back in uh, Forbidden Woods. Um, so if you haven't got it, check that video out. And um, yeah, there's timestamps. You can just go straight to it. So yeah, once the carriage arrives, get in it. And then you're going to be taken to Forsaken Canehurst Castle, Castle Canehurst, whatever. You'll get the trophy, Canehurst, there. And uh, yeah. That's it. So if you turn around, you actually see the carriage is is broken and the horses are dead. So it's it's creepy and I don't know. I love the the aesthetic of this place. Uh, this is one of the few. This is basically the only lamp you can use until you've beaten the boss. So make sure you light that. Otherwise, you'll be back and you'll have to come back again using the horses. This is a shortcut we'll be opening up later on. So just run around the back and get these uh, cold bloods for now. <sighs> yeah. These enemies coming up, I don't know, I'm going to call them bloodsuckers because it just kind of makes sense. They're like massive ticks, almost. You can see them there. They hurt like hell. <laughs> uh, so I was checking here if they're susceptible to fire damage because I couldn't remember. The answer is no, not really. Maybe, I don't know, maybe if we did a charge R2 they'd probably be better. But these guys, really, you can see how, how much they hurt there and they jump on you and they do, they're relentless. So, you're going to see me mess this up for a while, <laughs> but I'm going to get through this bit here. Uh, I'm going to go down to the side here, and it's going to be a bit of a, a nightmare. But I'll show you so you don't particularly have to do it if you don't want to. Uh, there is two more up on the hill, and these these little worms you're going to see in a minute. So there's two there. I'm actually going to go and kill those in a minute just in case they charge me down. These little worms... My god, are these guys annoying. So they're not particularly susceptible to fire, which is great. <laughs> uh, so you're going to have to use um, the axe. The The reason I have the fire uh, the sword, I've turned the Ludwig's Holy Blade into a fire weapon, is for later on when we go to the Nightmare of Mensis. There are some werewolf-type creatures. Uh, when you kill them, those worms come out of them. So that's why I've got them, because they burst. I think it's two or three of those worms. It's at least two. Um, they come flying out, and there's all sorts going on, so you don't want those things knocking about as well. So once if you kill these werewolves with fire, then the worms do not appear. But weirdly, the, uh, the worms are not particularly susceptible to fire themselves, which is strange, I think. So yeah, these, these things are just the worst. There's some more further up. This is close. <laughs> I can't believe that didn't kill me. Um, yeah, there's some more up towards the, the actual castle gate. Um, but you can use some gravestones up there to kind of block, like I'm doing here. 
kind of get them stuck and blocked on something. This is the best way. Once they're out in the <laughs> once they're out in the open, they're uh, they're a real pain. The because they, they jump on you, um, and even if you're attacking, it doesn't stop their jump, which is partly an attack. So you're gonna get hit regardless. Uh, so yeah, the reason I killed those two very poorly then is um, because I don't want them following me down here. I'm going to go and get the tempering blood gemstone uh, number three. It's it's one I'll use, but it can get outpaced later on for being very good. It's not particularly great. Um, I think it gives you extra healing or something towards the bottom end of your health, something like that. But it does give you more. Um, attack as as well so the main problem here is these worms they are everywhere they can fly them at the walls they are just the worst and because they're on the floor like that you can't particularly hit them very easily maybe I should be using the shortened axe that might actually make this easier to be honest um, so yeah they're everywhere don't just run for it they'll they'll corner you and it'll be a nightmare um, see so yeah, I just take your time if you want to come this way again if you're not bothered about this gemstone then uh, don't do this don't put yourself through this the enemies in the castle themselves there's only a handful that will give out um, blood vials most of them are ghosts or gargoyles which don't really give out well the ghosts don't don't give out blood vials so you're stuck so if you get to the end of the area and you're running out um, yeah you're kind of stuck so uh, yeah just be aware of that there's no health files in this area really there are a few but um, again it's random drop so uh, don't rely on getting them so finally we get it oh, all that for that <laughs> I suppose it's good for um, blood echoes as well so more ticks up here so this is the way you're supposed to come you're supposed to come up this way and uh, yeah there's some more ticks up here these annoying things uh, the they're weird. You get some of these that's kind of medium fed, and then you see some which don't have anything in them. Uh, they seem to be friskier than ones with uh, that are still hungry. They, um, I don't know. And then there's ones that are, there's one in the corner that's full and it can't really move. Uh, so it's it's pretty cool to see them. And we do get these enemies. If you're going to follow me into the DLC when I finish the platinum, uh, you will see them again. Um, these are kind of starved ones, but the ones in the DLC are nice and fat, so yeah um, When you get a, an opportunity to stand behind some statues like this I'm about to do this is the best way to kind of oh, that's bad. Oh nearly um, Use the statues if you can Yeah, especially when there's two of them on you. You don't want that So all I'm doing is going to get some numbing mist I'm basically showing you where the stuff is so you can make a decision on whether you want to go and get it or not Numbing Mist is the stuff that stops uh, enemies, players, whoever, healing. So it's not essential, so don't feel like you need to come and get this if you don't want to. So, yeah. Kill those two, get a blood, blood tinge gemstone, which you can actually put on your gun, on your weapon, which I'm going to do um, for the boss fight, because I can, that's all. Uh, it's not necessary. It, it does a little bit more damage with your gun. That's all. Uh, we're not scaling from for blood tinge anyway. We're not putting any points into it, so uh, it's not perfect. Um, it's not for our build anyway, but it does a little bit more. So you can see these are a bit thinner. They're a bit sort of uh, emaciated almost. They've not got much of a belly on them. Uh, yeah, that one's not supposed to come round. You're not supposed to get round here. <laughs> Yeah, they, they're so quick and annoying, these guys. So if you do want to, if you, I'm showing you these items here. I'm going to go and get two Frenzied Cold Blood, um, which is level 9, and uh, four more Numbing Mist in the corner here. If you're not bothered, just run for it. If you're struggling with these guys, just run for the door uh, and ignore them. They won't follow you in, so don't worry. Uh, but yeah, thoughts I would show you. You're not supposed to come around either. Yeah, so this is my favourite area once we get through this. I think Bloodborne, Dark Souls, all that is best, or they are best when we're in sort of a castle environment. We have that, that sort of gothic thing going on. That's when I always think they look the best. <laughs> this one I can't even move properly <laughs> and pop. Um, yeah, so that, that's why I like this one. And then the boss fight of this is my favourite boss fight. 
Um, in the main game, there is a better one in the DLC, but in the main game, the whole sort of story behind it and everything, and just how how good it is, it, the two sort of uh, stages to the battle, really good. So yeah, if you don't want to bother with the ticks, just run straight to this door and it will open. Um, but be aware they will chase you down until you get through the door. And here we are, this looks amazing. <laughs> uh, so there's ghosts everywhere in here. The best way to take these ghosts on is, of course, with the Charge R2. Now these guys are kind of innocent, these sort of prey. They do uh, come after you if you hit them. Uh, so yeah, two Charge R2s. I wouldn't try and do uh, follow-up R1 attacks on these ghosts because they don't have hitboxes as they're getting up which you will see or you've just seen um, so two charge R2's kind of perfectly times it uh, you should have enough uh, endurance now or stamina to to do that uh, and then come and open this and this is the writer palalsh pal yeah that word uh, <laughs> that's a weapon we need so make sure you grab that it's not one I'm going to use but it's there if you want to mess around with weapons and things so yeah they are uh, everywhere these ghosts and they can hurt you, no problem. That slashing they do if they get um, get you sort of caught in a corner or anything like that, they uh, they're going to tear you apart. These are the the reason I'm killing these kind of innocent looking ones. Um, as cruel as that actually is and sounds, is they drop blood vials. One of the few enemies in this place that do. So if you see them, unfortunately, kill them. Um, yeah, as these are, are ghosts, they don't show up until you sort of get near them. So be aware that there might be some enemies. Uh, these these crying, they are crying as well. That's a good way to tell uh, if they're around. If you can still hear crying, there's still one of those ghosts somewhere. So that you can't see them until you get to walk, walk towards them. And um, if you actually get them in light, like this, there's one here. If you can get her down onto the stairs into the light, you can actually see she's... Uh, kind of in full human form she has a skin tone and everything she's not just pale white or they're not just pale white should I say uh, which is quite interesting I'm not actually sure what's going on with the, the law behind these so that attack is um, they hurt these, these they don't mess around <laughs> so yeah keeping your distance is is a must really long weapon nice and hard hitting and uh, yeah, just take your time. Don't go rushing through because there might be one just waiting for you. So this is the wrong way that we're going. <laughs> and it's just to get this one item here. And it is a bloodstone chunk, which of course we need. There's going to be five in this area, which meaning if you upgraded the hunter axe or whatever you're using up to seven in the previous video using the three in the uh, Nightmare Frontier, then you should be able to get the 5 here and go up to plus 8 before the boss fight. Which is what I will do, because we'll open that shortcut up and uh, we'll do that. That was not what I was supposed to do. <laughs> so you can see how much they hurt there. That was half my health from 2 attacks. Uh, so yeah, if you get these guys on you um, in a group, which they can easily do later on, they can uh, quickly finish you off. So don't take them for granted, as slow as they may seem initially. So you can see her in the light there, kind of. <laughs> or not anymore, I suppose. There you can see they have a a glow to them, which is, is a bit strange for a ghost, but never mind. There we go. Are you going to give me one? No. <laughs> no blood vials from that one. And uh, yeah, this this area is quite slow. It does it really impressive looking and things like that. Uh, you can see there's a few of them who try and trap you as well. Uh, so you have to go into that room to get them to spawn in like that. Um, it's actually a very short area, this. But it's going to take a while because of the way I'm killing all of these. There are items in all these rooms. Um, and if you're not bothered about the item, then you can just run through. If you're not bothered about the blood echoes, of course, you can just run through as well. Um, but they do give a, f a fairly decent amount each... 500 and something if you have the rune on that I'm using moon rune using that So if you want to build up we'll have about 80,000 or so by the time we finish this area uh, It's good for a couple of levels and we'll do that before we go and take the boss on Who is 
awesome. <laughs> Love the boss of this place. The, the fight is on top of the roof of this castle as well. It's so so cool looking. So there's one come around here to get the noble dress. If you're not bothered about having a dress, then we don't need it for a trophy or anything. So <laughs> just run through the, the room if you're not bothered. But if you want to play dress up, there you go. You can do that now. Nothing out here. And now we're going to interact, uh, well, meet a new enemy type. Uh, have we seen one before? We may have seen one before. But here they are anyway. These gargoyle things. Yeah, watch out, because they can do this. So don't let them do that, because it's annoying and it takes a lot of health away. <laughs> so yeah, it's because I was charging. Again, I, that crutch of using the charge R2. Uh, yeah, they have a decent... Um, you have a decent amount of space between you and the enemies when they're attacking. They don't, they're not very long range, well, apart from that grab. Uh, but yeah, watch out. Their, their main thing is element of surprise. Yeah, you, can, you may hear it, you may not. Uh, one dropping out, that one will drop, and you'll be able to hear it. This is not going very well, this area, at all. It feels like, I feel like I've <laughs> been uh, getting hit a lot, making stupid mistakes. So I do apologise, but uh, the boss fight's a treat. It's uh, I do it quite well and um, get quite all the moves I want him to do he does so we can uh, see that just quick detour up here I'm going to go get another bloodstone chunk so make sure you come and grab this there's plenty of chunks in the game we will get but we'll be able to get um, two weapons up to well one up to plus ten which is what we're doing uh, one another one up to plus nine potentially plus ten if you buy uh, another rock blood rock with um, 60 insight you can see I'm getting up there uh, 35 I'm over 40 by the end of this uh, so you will be getting insight all the time when you hear sort of a, a weird sort of vacuum type noise as you enter an area or if something happens and there's a bit of a blue kind of mist around you that's you getting an insight for something that's happened in the world uh, basically you're moving towards craziness uh, <laughs> um, so you are getting it all the time even without the madman's knowledge. We still have lots of madman's knowledge. So we can afford to purchase that second blood rock by the end of the game. Um, and it's up to you whether you want to plus 10 two weapons in the main game. If you're not planning on doing the DLC. Or you can wait to keep one of the blood rocks for the DLC. And uh, you might find a better weapon there that you want to plus 10. So don't go burning through all of your upgrade stuff straight away. Um, of course I'll let you know where you can get certain items anyway plus the uh, the dungeons are really good for upgrade materials and things and we have to do those unfortunately <laughs> so here I'm just getting the executioners garb gauntlets and trousers so if you don't want those don't worry about doing that bit and then we're gonna get the executioners glove which is actually a tool but that's later on so here we are, this is the shortcut, finally. The Vile Blood Register is an online thing. It's like a leaderboard, actually. Um, we, you can join the Vile Bloods once you've beaten the boss of this area, Martyr Ligarius. Uh, you can join the Vile Bloods. I will be doing it to get one of the badges that we need so we can purchase weapons. Um, so here's the shortcut. Make sure you activate it. We're back at the lamp here at the bottom. So, uh, yeah, that's it. So you you don't have to deal with any of those ticks or anything again. Um yeah, it's, it's basically a leaderboard. Every time you kill a, a hunter while in there using their rune, you get a blood dreg, I think it is. Um, and it's kind of a leaderboard, I think. I don't, know, I don't use it, so <laughs> whatever. Uh, so what I'm doing here is I'm running through this room to get to this guy. These are... There's quite a few of these around. Obviously, I'm going to show you where they are. They fire like poison darts at you. And they're relentless as well. They, they're pretty quick. Uh, and because they're darts almost and there's no noise to them uh, you can't really tell when they're firing or where they're coming from so yeah make sure you go through and grab those guys sometimes these um, these women can scream out if that happens you're gonna see a little red uh, symbol on the back of you like a, on your head like a, a mark they are gonna hunt you down so you want to just dodge and get the hell out of the way if that happens, because these guys are going to chase you down and descend upon you in one group. So if that happens, uh, run. You're going to see it happen to me 
Um, on the way back up here, I'm going to come back through this way uh, using the shortcut once we have enough blood rocks, uh, blood chunks to upgrade the weapons plus eight just before the boss. So it does happen then, so you will see it. Uh, but yeah, don't try and take them on, just escape. Don't necessarily run up the stairs, maybe run back out or use the, the shortcut or something. Just uh, be aware uh, you're marked for death or so to speak. So yeah, um, of course, charge out to and just get rid of all these guys. There we go, I think there's one left. You can still hear them crying, like I said. So if you hear one, watch out. Here's the Evelyn. This is a weapon, it's a gun. It's uh, a good one. So if you want to switch around, mess around with it, then uh, maybe try that. Uh, for this boss later on, Ligarius, I'm actually going to be one-handing pretty much the whole time. Um, yeah, I'm just trying out. I didn't think it was any good. <laughs> um, switch back. I was going to do health, but I saw her. Yeah, there we go. Um, yeah, I'm going to be one-handing and parrying this boss. So maybe get used to a bit of parrying now and again here, whatever. Or go back to some easier enemies if you're struggling with it with the boss. Uh, yeah, I'm going to be using the blunderbuss. So all weapons parry. They can all be used for it. Uh, the reason we're using the blunderbuss is it has a wider spread. Here's one of these guys with the darts, so make sure you go and get him. Um, the blunderbuss it's obviously has that sort of shotgun effect. So if an enemy's closer and quick, uh, or closing down quick on you, you don't need to worry about being particularly accurate. Uh, the blunderbuss is going to hit them uh, if they're closing in, and that's when you need to be hitting them. So that's why we're using that. It's good for parrying for beginners, I suppose. Like myself, I am terrible at parrying. Um, but it really does help if you're able to do it with some of the bosses. So you're going to see me getting hit now. Where is it? There we go. Uh, so there's actually a dark guy off to the left-hand side. On some, You can see them just coming in really quick and uh, kind of invisible. You see him there just uh, with a candlestick. So it's actually best to go from the left hand side first here, but I'm just going to kill this one. And then I'm going to run across to him. Should have gone left hand side. Um, so do that, don't do this way. Otherwise, he, he it's they just pin you down. So I'm using this bookcase as cover while we get rid of him. Then we're going to try and run. You can't even really roll. Well, you can if you time it right. <laughs> but you can see they do a lot of damage. And, uh, yeah, you just need to go and get rid of them quickly. There we go. That was a bit of a mess. So, yeah, go to the left-hand side and take him on. Come straight from this side uh, to, to get rid of him without getting hit. These guys are pretty brutal as well with their, their swords, so watch out for those. But they do drop the vials. They're one of the few wep uh, weapons, enemies that do. I'm running past here because I've got confused. <laughs> uh... I'm actually, I'm actually looking for a uh, scurrying beast at that point. It's, it's upstairs. I completely forgot. It's very similar looking, but uh, there is a bloodstone chunk up here as well. So that's uh, that's number three. We just need two more, which are in a uh, scurrying beast upstairs. This is a shortcut we'll be opening later on. We're just going to go round and open that up now. Just going to kill this innocent, harmless being to see if they have blood vials and unfortunately they do not come back around here because I know there were some drops here luckily there are four of them and now we're gonna head out the window so when you head out the window if you drop to the left hand side not only is it safer with regards to taking damage you can get six quicksilver bullets now that was worth it <laughs> um, yeah gargoyles down here two of them so watch out Try and get them one at a time. The other one will drop from the other end. Got all of those charge R2s when they don't miss, when they miss with the first one. And then we're going to be going into the building on the left and then opening the shortcut up, which is dead ahead. So we're going to get the Executioner's Gloves from the building in the left in a moment. That's another Hunter tool. Uh, again, an arcane thing. 
It is the attack that Marta Lagarius does, so you will see it in action in the boss fight. This room is a bit different. So you've got the normal ghosts or spectres, whatever, these crying women, uh, the ones with the knives. Then you have some headless ones, like this one here. No? Yes, no. This is another knife one. Headless one. Uh, where are we? There we are. So there's two of them coming. They don't actually do any damage themselves. What they do is hold their head up and scream like that. And if you get caught in that scream, this happens. They don't actually come for you themselves, but what they, that will do is uh, obviously stun you if one of the ones with a knife is around. So be careful in this room. You can stand back from it, and uh, if you time it correctly, not like that, then uh, you can kill them before the second one starts. Uh, yeah, so watch out. Kill the ones with the knives as soon as you see them, and uh, don't just go running in. There's a guy with a dark gun, or I think they are dark guns, whatever they are, here. So if you kind of swing round the corner, you'll hit them. And then if you do it again, you should be able to do it before the screamers come round. And there's one, at least one with a knife here as well. You can see her walking towards me. So don't go running in because there's two screamers. You'll get stun locked. And uh, this one will, will kill you, the one with a knife. So just watch out. And uh, time it correctly. There, so once that one's dead, you're pretty much okay. There is another one, but she doesn't wake up uh, straight away. She's next to the screamer behind me. There we go, just there. You can just see, out, see her outline. So it's kind of inching forward in this area. Not to wake all the ghosts up at once. That's the kind of key. And there we go. So, quick silver bullets, uh, the Executioner Glove, which is um, a pretty good arcane weapon if you're an arcane build, uh, or a tool, should I say. Um, yeah, you'll see it in action. It sort of red schools it, it fires out. Don't go down the middle of the table, turn around and go down the right hand side. There is one more ghost here, so watch out. I completely forgot about her, <laughs> like that. Of course, I'm using Charge R2s to get rid of her, and that's pretty much it for the level uh, really, this this area so open this up and you can get knights uh, garb and etc if you want that the wig for the knight set is upstairs on the roof we'll get that afterwards if you want to mess around changing clothes that's up to you you don't have to wear the same stuff as me um, then we're going to go down this carefully down this edge and do not run across like that <laughs> I don't know what that was uh, go there uh, so that's where we're going. I'm just going to run across here, get some kin cold blood, which is on this. So watch out, a gargoyle will drop once you pick the item up. And there he is. Yeah, that first hit, it does miss quite a few uh, enemies. You should be able to get a few blood shards off those as well. Quite a common drop off those guys. And then we're going to run through and open this shortcut up. Gonna pull that bookcase back, and we're gonna be open in the. We're gonna be in the first room, with uh, where all the women were, where all the screaming ladies were, with the uh, the first dark guy. He was up on this platform here. So what I'm actually doing here is getting confused again, and I'm gonna remember. There we go. I actually need to get the chunks. I was gonna run back and level my weapon up, but I haven't actually picked all the chunks up yet. So go up here. Uh, you're gonna get a warm blood gemstone. That doesn't do anything particularly for us because it's a uh, blood tinge scaling on your weapon. We're not using blood tinge, so that doesn't really matter. But we will be able to get the blood tinge weapon, the main one. Well, I think it is the one I associate with blood tinge anyway. Uh, the Chikage at the end because we're going to get the badge um, once we've killed this boss. So if you want to mess around with blood tinge, it's probably a bit late now. But if you want to start a new game in any, at any point, uh, yeah, this is the weapon you want to get. So run down here and then uh, Scurrying Beast. Very important one. Kill this guy. And you're going to get two Bloodstone Chunks. Hopefully. You should. I'm pretty sure it's not like uh, Dark Souls, Demon Souls. Uh, it's not random. I think they're actually always the same on this. 
so yeah you should have five chunks there were five chunks in this whole area I've picked up five in this video um, so we can go and get the level up to plus eight you should be seven already from the previous video in uh, Nightmare Frontier uh, yeah that's a hell of a place <laughs> literally it does give you nightmares that place uh, so I'm running back down I'm gonna go and use the lift and go and cash in what I've got and uh, increase the the weapons plus eight not essential that you do this but it can help I'm also going to change one of the runes round as well uh, because I'm going to be doing parrying and reposting visceral attacks whatever you want to call them uh, so there are a, f a different rune that can help with that we don't have the damage one there is a rune later on that uh, increases damage of visceral attacks I don't have that yet but we can uh, switch a few things around so it's a nice little shortcut that all set up and I'm gonna head back and uh, mess around with a few things get ready for the boss fight basically because this is if you're not ready for it this is gonna be a tough one obviously I'm going to walk you through it and uh, explain everything the best I can I'm gonna put a few points into the hunter at blunderbuss he's gonna see the blood tinge damage goes up uh, slightly it's that red one there um, yeah don't go mad with the the, the weapon it's not essential I'm just doing it for the fun of it because I'm not gonna use it elsewhere I'm gonna put a, a gem in it as well which will increase the blood attack uh, but we are, we're not set up for that anyway, but it will do a bit more damage um, Not that it's something you use for damage anyway, so there's the gemstone I got from right at the start it increases physical attack and um, So it is better than the one I had on that previously So I'm just checking elsewhere what we have so it does physical attack is up more and then physical is up near death as well uh, a little bit more so I'm just messing around trying to find what's Best there, which ones are the best ones I have? You may have different ones if you've got lucky with your drops. And then I'm going to keep communion on. You want plenty of blood vials. Uh, and then I'm going to remove the moon rune. And I'm going to put uh, blood rapture on there, which visceral attacks it gives you 200 health back for every visceral attack, which can be helpful because you can parry this guy that we're going to fight uh, pretty much all the time. I'm going to keep that rune on as well. No summons for this one. It's just you and him, which is pretty awesome, actually. Uh, but he is... Yeah, he's pretty vicious. So before that, I'm just going to do a bit of leveling. Vitality is probably a good one. Um, if I haven't... I think I've already mentioned it, but if I haven't yet... Um, if you press up on the D-pad, you will take some of your health away, and you will gain five... Uh, Quicksilver bullets. You can do this quite a lot. You can only do five at a time But once you've spent the five you can do it again and uh, get five more uh, Basically when you're running out of ammo because you may run out of ammo during this boss fight you may use all 20 um, If you're firing around which is what I usually do <laughs> um, And if you get caught short then you can press up on the d-pad you'll use um, Some of your health which you can obviously get back from blood vials and you'll gain five more bullets so yeah you're not gonna see me do that but just something you, I thought I'd tell you in case you didn't know um, yeah if you're running low which you may well do so I'm gonna use the shortcut to get back up all the room is going to be full again now and you're gonna see this scream in effect so as I run through one of them is going to scream where is she where is she one of them there so it's happened one of them so they all scream I'm not actually sure how that happens or which one does it but what you want to do is just run kill this guy and get the hell out you can see them they are coming in <laughs> they are messing around and uh, get the hell out so yeah if that happens run don't need don't stick around killing them at this point no need to yep goodbye so I'm just sticking this on get a bit of health back upstairs again so we've not actually been up here yet but this is the way to the boss and uh, pretty much the end of the area the roof is literally the pinnacle of the area that's it night's wig over here there is a gargoyle guarding it and it has red eyes it's a bit more powerful this one so uh, don't take it for granted they do have that attack as well the uh, kind of shout it's not the most common attack that they do especially if you're up close 
Yeah, that went through. That was no good. Where are you going? <laughs> We're all missing. So yeah, grab that. This is the wig if you want it. And then get the hell out because there's two more gargoyles going to drop down. But you can just ignore them. And then uh, use these edge of these roofs to uh, continue on. This is actually the way it's supposed to go. I'm not doing a shortcut or anything. So be careful dropping down on these edges. Line it up properly before you drop. And uh, yeah, we're here. We're at the boss. So we will be doing the backup save. Because why not? He's not particularly... Well, I don't think he's... I think he's actually resistant to things like bolt paper, fire paper. So none of that. Don't worry about any of that. Uh, arcane, all that. He is resistant. You're just going to have to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with him, basically. The old-fashioned way. <laughs> so grab that, the, the hunter's mark there, uh, in case you need to go back for any reason. And, um, yeah, make a backup save before starting. And then on we go. So pretty cool uh, cutscene. I'm not going to show it, but it's a, it's a cool one, the way he's kind of warming up as he... Uh, Basically, he's guarding something up here. This is the reason why he's up here. So he has two phases. First phase is magic, like this. So those skulls you can dodge through. This is the same one attack. When he does the sort of swirl, that's going to be the skulls. When he does this swirl and slam, it's a good time to get attacks if you d get it right. But that big attack he does there, it doesn't really track you once it starts moving. So you can kind of dodge around it. Um, but that will kill you instantly if you get trapped in that, so do watch out. You can dodge through the little skulls as there as well there. So this is, yeah, like I said, it's a game of two halves. This you need to be semi-aggressive. Uh, trying to get behind him is a good thing. So here he's doing the uh, swirl. He's missing. Get the charge on there. So you can see I'm single-handed to be quicker. Um, and also we're going to be parrying later as well. So here's the slam again. So he's going to charge that big ball of energy up. Do, ne do not get caught in that. Not worth it. I know it looks like a big opening, but don't take him on. Um, and then keep hitting him. Just trying to get around the back of him. Dodge to the left is usually best. And then when he does this, get behind him, charge up, and you'll be able to do a visceral. You need to stop that attack that he's doing. Uh, it's like a beast mode. And after he's done that attack, it's the second half of the fight, which is him in uh, melee mode. So he will do this quite often where he slams the sword into the floor um, and then you need to go and kill that sword instantly because it will fire loads of different swords at you but it only takes one hit. He will do it quite often so don't run into the blast, after the blast run up and hit the sword and uh, yeah this is a bit of a weird moment, he's completely stopped so I thought we were just going to stand here for a while and then he wakes up again. Uh, yeah so he's going to do it a few times, he'll slam into the floor like that. Um, and he's completely open to being able to parry at this point, which you're going to see in a moment. He is really open to parrying. So at the top of his attacks, to just as it's about to come down, is the best time to parry. So shoot your gun into him. You can get him with all attacks that he does. He has this flying attack, which you're going to see now. Again, you can parry as he's coming towards you. Just shoot him and then attack, obviously with R1. And then again... Just wait for him to attack, wait for him to come to you, parry, done, done. So that was fairly simple looking. I didn't use much in the way of vials, I didn't use much in the way of bullets. It's take your time. Um, especially. So in the first half you want to be semi-aggressive. Uh, you want to get in, get behind him, dodging left, round him. Uh, trying to avoid his magic, obviously. And then once he does that charge, where he's sort of charging in the floor, run behind him. Do the charge attack into his back so you get da he gets down on his knees and you can do the visceral. And then after that, go into sort of defensive parry mode. Wait for him to attack you uh, and t attack those swords um, when he slams them into the ground. So you saw me just pick up a crown and put it on. You need to do that. So he has been defending this place. This is what he's been doing. This is the Vile Bloods. Um, so you need to put that crown on, and then this door's all going to open up, you're going to get that cutscene, and then you need to come in here, and you're going to find Annalise, the Queen of the Vile Bloods. So this is what he was protecting, essentially he was stopping this. He was, uh, he's been sat up on this roof protecting everybody from these people. So, don't go any further than this, stop in this ring of candles here, and kneel. Do not walk forward, uh, you need to sort of 
pray to her, so speak to her and swear oath to the vile bloods, and then again uh, accept to drink their blood, partake in the blood oath. And once you've done that, you'll get the corruption uh, rune, you'll get the Canehurst badge, and you'll get the respect gesture. The most important thing is the Canehurst badge. You can now purchase the Chikage, which is the blood tinge weapon. Um, and that's it. So yeah, you can. Go, that's all we need her for. So that's it. Once you have the badge, you're done. That's fine. And what we're going to do now is we're going to get the unopened summons on the table here. And we're going to go and get another badge. You remember Alfred, the guy from near the beginning of the game? Uh, he's been stood around. We can go and give him this uh, this summons, and that's what we're going to go and do now. Who? Yeah, so good luck with that fight. It's not, it looks like he is really intense on you, like closing you down all the time. Just breathe and watch what he's doing as opposed to trying to attack him constantly. So, uh, just a neat little thing I'm trying to show you here. If you have the respect uh, gesture, use the left on the, the, the touchpad. You can do gestures to the doll and she will react accordingly. I thought it was actually pretty cool. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to switch back from the crown. I don't need that on. We'll put the hunter hat back, hunter hat back on. Uh, and then we're going to go to um, Cathedral Ward. We're going to go and see Alfred. We're going to give him those summons. So this is not essential. It's not part of Platinum or anything, what I'm doing now. Well, I'm about to get a badge off him. That is part of the Platinum. But you could also just kill him for the badge early on. Um, so yeah, it's... Up to you how you deal with this, but either way you can uh, give him the summons or you can kill him at this point. We could kill him earlier, but we've left him alive in case you wanted to do this, because it's, uh, it's kind of cool. Um, so yeah, run back through here. He'll be waiting uh, where he's been waiting the whole time, pretty much. I thought that was dead. It's not dead. <laughs> there we go. So yeah, this, places like this are just a breeze now with all the uh, high-powered weapons we have now. Yeah, watch out for this thing as well. Brain sucker. And the crow. That comes out of nowhere. <laughs> and he's just going to be just down here. And you've got two options. You can either kill him, but he's kind of a nice guy, so we won't. We're going to give him the summons instead. So you'll see that option now once you have it. Let's think up something to discuss. Just tell me what piques your interest. So come on, there we go. So you're going to have hand over unopened summons. So he's a vile blood hunter. He can now gain access because we've opened everything up. So speak to him and he's going to say that he's going to depart. He's going to go and kill Queen Annalise. So he's going to give you the wheel hunter badge and this, this gesture here. But most importantly, the badge. You can get the badge by just killing him. Completely up to you what you do. Um, yeah. So let him finish off and then we're going to go and run back. Uh, and I'll just sort of quickly show you the outcome. What we do next is not essential. We have the two badges. That's all we need from this side quest. Um, but yeah, he's going to go and kill Annalise, the queen of the Vile Bloods. And then he's going to kill himself. And it's... it's yeah, I'm going to let you... Yeah, yeah. I kind of have to explain what's going on. Um, so yeah, I'm going to run back. And I'll explain when we actually get there what's going on. So a pretty cool little thing as well is the insight is at 40. It's really high now. So you can actually see the amygdalas on the buildings. You see that's always been there. Uh, if you remember on the side here, there was some uh, garb, uh, a set, very early on when we first came down to Old Yarnum. Uh, and it, you saw sort of a blue flash as you grabbed it. That was that trying to grab you. Uh, that is also the amygdala that takes you to the DLC. So we will be back there later on to have, make that happen. So going back... And then we go back to the Vile Blood Queen's chamber. And you're going to see a hell of a scene now. <laughs> it's everywhere. He has just annihilated her. Uh, so yeah, listen to him go on. He's kind of filled his thing, his prophecy. He now wants to become the martyr. So yeah. But there's two sort of things that happen now. Um, he can give you a rune. And you can either try and kill him now which I do and die, which I'm not going to do. Um, I'm not going to show it. Or 
you can let him go and kill himself. Either way, what he's just done has no effect on anything because you saw me just pick up the queenly flesh there. So if you grab that, just for the sake of going along with the story, if you grab that, uh, we'll use it later on. Don't do this. Best thing, don't kill him. Realised afterwards, he is rock hard. I've never actually tried to kill him before. So we're just going to ignore that and get the hell out of here. Um, yeah, don't try and do that. If you go back to where we first met him on the way to Old Yarnum, I'm not going to do it. But if you go back there, he will be dead. He's killed himself. He's fulfilled his thing. He wants to become a martyr. So he's killed himself. Um, so it was on the way to Old Yarnum. If I get a chance to go down there later on, I'll go and grab the rune. But the rune is not very good. It basically plus 2% on all your blood vials. I mean, okay. <laughs> not particularly very good at all. Um, yeah, he'll kill himself. He'll be down. Where we first met him, he was kneeling down praying next to where we opened up the uh, the way to Old Yarnum. Um, that's where he'll be. He'll be dead, and you can pick the rune up. Uh, but yes, we have the queenly fl flesh, so we can actually, um, later on in one of the boss rooms, we can uh, give that to uh, an altar, and the vile blood queen, Annalise, will come back to life, and we can continue. Not that we need to, but I just thought it was a cool little sort of circle, so I've left it in. Bit of leveling up, and that's it. Right, we're off to Bergenworth next. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.